By the end of 2027, European farmers will lose access to one of their main chemical seed coating options for wheat and barley. And so far, there's no chemical replacement on the market. That looming gap could reshape how Europe protects its seed. So, I came here to Petkiss, where engineers and scientists are exploring alternatives to understand what could come next when the chemistry runs out. It is a big shift. It's a big shift in mindset because people are, our farmers and consumers are so used for using seed treatments as a sustainable available solution, which is very easy to apply, very easy to use, and so effective. So that will require a huge mindset shift. So what are you hearing from the, from the seed sector in terms of the seed processors and farmers in how they're going to navigate this change? It is a, a huge concern. I'd have other question what kind of alternatives there are available and when they will be available right. and also about how um, acute they are. And so it also reminds them about, or it reminds them, it will force them to invest. And that's also another kind of concern because you no longer know when will be there the solutions, how long will they remain, because they all depend also on regulations. Makes so much sense. So now... There are biologicals, physical treatments, some other non-chemical methods. What's showing the most promise right now as, as a viable alternative? If you ask me, I would say the physical ones, but I actually say but. I would also go there for looking them as a whole. So looking there into how we can combine them. Because the more we looking into sustainable solutions, I strongly believe it's a combination of them to so Petkiss is in the process of upscaling a process called hygienization. Yes. Uh, for people who aren't familiar with it, what does that mean? And how does it differ from a conventional chemical coating? We are using hot steam, which is then working as an active mode of action on the pathogens located on the seed, which is killing them and reducing them to levels which the seeds can deal with and we can accept it. So it sounds simple, but I'm quite sure it is not so simple as it sounds. Uh, what are the biggest hurdles to scaling it? Yeah, there are two, two hurdles. The one is uh, talking about energy, which is they used to produce the mode of action, so to produce the steam. And that's valid for all of the physical sea treatments, which are the moment they are in discussion or upcoming. And the other point is about building um, building protocols and recipes so that you can gain this kind of trust and accuracy in the mode of action itself. So that, again, our customers and farmers having the same trust in it as a, a solution as they are used to it from the chemical treatments which they are used from the past. There's a lot of concern in the seed sector right now about the loss of, of a very trusted chemical option. Yeah. How would you characterize where we're at right now? So always when you lose something which you're familiar with, it's a threat, it's a concern. But I think we're already at a moment in that shape that we have turned it into an opportunity because it, it forces us to rethink how we treat our seeds. Right. So and what are you hearing from the seed sector in terms of this technology? Is there is there excitement or is there still room for the seed sector to learn more about it? That is a very tough question, to be honest. I would say it's, a, it's more excitement which is coming now because they all are aware of we need to be more open for new treatment options, right? And so also for new technologies. And so it's excitement. But you also need to be there clear. It's uh, and that's, that I totally can understand the seed sector. You need to have their good data. You need to show proof. You need to build trust, and that is what we all in the seed industry need to to work for. That we can gain to that, and that the physical seed treatments get in the same position as the chemical treatments had in the past. Absolutely, so, absolutely. No, I I can hear your excitement in this. What is it like to be sort of on the this this new? more sustainable path forward? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good uh, term, which I like, putting those uh, treatments in together and talking about physical seed treatments because I think it's a very sustainable one because it will not fall under these regulations like the chemical uh, versions where we are handing on the politics if they allow us to use it or how long they allow us to use it. So it's a very sustainable one which will remain once it's built and it can go in combinations. Right. So not just in terms of environmental sustainability, but also in terms of 
long-term thinking and viability for businesses. Yeah. They can be planning around this particular product over the long term. Yes. I like it. Ulrike, it's nice to meet thank you. Thank you for making time. 